Hey baby, where are we going? We are going to Carino Reserva. Carino Reserva. on our list for a while and yeah I'm excited nice all right we're going to check out Japanese and Italian fusion place I'm super excited well I don't sound excited but I am excited it's very cool we heard really good things about the place um, Chef apparently is phenomenal. So uh, we're not doing a tasting menu. We're but not who knows? doing a tasting menu. <laughs> who knows? We're not doing a tasting menu. We'll see what we can do, and then maybe come back to do uh, like a five course appearance. There we go. We'll exactly. See. We'll see what they have to offer. Who knows? Yeah. So. We'll see what happens, uh, this uh, new adventure. And this time we made a reservation because we discovered that in Calgary after COVID, you literally can't get anywhere unless you make reservations. So uh, memo to self, make reservations. This time we did it, so we should be good to go. Very jazzy. Okay, so cool, cool first impressions. Absolutely cool. We talked about the name of the restaurant and how the chef is Japanese, or loves Italian cuisine, um, and sharing. It's all about the darling. I think they say Carino means darling. Yeah. And then how you share and you have an experience. So. As the foodies we are, we're going to have the experience. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, we basically we basically decided to do a four course meal that the waiter picks, uh, paired with sake. So sounds like a great idea. Let's do it. Beautiful space. Beautiful space. Really good waiter so far. Yeah, really good waiter. Twenty four degrees in Calgary. And beautiful. Beautiful. So made for the experience. Made for the experience. Here we go. How is this this first? Uzu Uzu, Uzu sake. Amazing. Like, like, I think this place might be the first for a dinner club. And it's great space and so knowledgeable. So I really like that. I, I agree. I think uh, definitely this is. It doesn't feel like uh, like a, an alcoholic drink at all. Yeah, that's delicious. It's like delicious juice. That's lemonade slash not lemonade. All right. So caprese salads paired with uzu that's barely left. <laughs> this is. Uh, this looks amazing. So let's give it, let's dig. So caprese salad is probably one of my most favorite salads. I absolutely love it. And here they put um, a little bit of sweetness in it that I've never tasted before, which is excellent. And arugula. Arugula you normally don't put on a caprese salad. But that combination of that sweetness um, paired with uzu wine. It was excellent. Uzu sake, yeah. It was, it was really, really good. Really good. And my lady here is still finishing hers. But uh, mine is all done. There's nothing left. Empty plate. So definitely, definitely a successful first uh, first course. What did you think about the first first course? So I'm not a fan of tomatoes. I actually don't really like them. But this was so tasty. The tomatoes were so juicy with a good bite. And the easy sauce. It's really easy. Okay, so Hon Jozo Sake number two. Uh, it's like fortified sake. That's okay. Dish number two: tempeh pasta with uh, what do you say, tomato sauce? Yeah, they tomato sauce. Yeah, looking great. Kind of like a spin on an Italian dish with parmesan on top of it. Excited, got our chopsticks. Let's do this. For the most unique dish that 
I've ever tasted. It has a heat, as if you're eating almost like a satay or something really warm. Um, but it felt like an Italian dish. So the fusion part, the Japanese and Italian, was on point. I agree. I think uh, he nailed he nailed the whole idea of taking something and like fusing the two flavors together because it really felt like a, a a true Asian dish, but it had distinct uh, Italian qualities. Like I'm suspecting that he was using like a wine or something in the sauce, and it it was really yeah. Like I don't I don't know. He just nailed it. And he gave us these two uh, two types of sake. So one of them was um, premium sake, and the other one was um, well, one is that Junmai and one Jun was Kodoshi. Yeah, yeah, uh, really, really nice. Like such a good pairing. Uh, like it was super, super smooth, and yeah, yeah, really incredible that he nailed the flavoring. Like and truly made it like a fusion dish. It's very rare that somebody he can do that. So awesome! A great job. But I'm still in awe. Spicy miso. Yeah, it's a spicy miso. Crazy. And then you know, it was Italian. It was almost like a bowl of Italian. Yeah, yeah. Traditional, tradition, traditional Italian dish, but unmistakably Asian. Yes. Crazy. We're getting a little bit of a lesson in uh, sake from the waiter because his uh, his his father-in-law is uh, Japanese, and I guess he knows a lot about sake, and uh, we're getting a really really nice lesson. I I am yes, it's really interesting. <laughs> it's really interesting, yeah. All right, course number three, duck duck. I guess duck with foie gras. And that's that's the guy with the the sake, the sake guy. This place is too amazing. Everybody must come here for the world. It's a month. It is the best restaurant in Calgary. They do not really. I think Carino is. They do not call Carino Reserve. Carino is truly huge. Meaning a true mix of Italian and Japanese and true mix in all its senses. This term is very traditional, like empty, empty, empty. Play, I'm just trying to see if it's like jelly, and then creme brulee. Creme brulee. Like, so, okay. yeah. With some sencha, fancy sencha tea. See that tea. you can't buy it in Canada, pretty much. Look, and this is true. Um, the chef is a master and his craft. And I can't wait to come here over and over. And I'm afraid that I might be thoroughly disappointed by other recipes. That's terrible. It is very terrible. <laughs> spoil us. We're, we're done. We may have to just go to our favorites again. But, <laughs> but nonetheless, we will maybe do two There we go. Because I don't know if we can get any better experience. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much forever. Take it. Um, anyway, it won't be much longer anyway. It's going to cool down when it goes into this. Okay. So from this point, it's two minutes. And then it's already two minutes. Yeah. Two minutes. And then it'll be ready for me. Okay. I will start a timer right now. I'll be back. Thank you. Two minutes. The fancy sencha and then the uzu and creme brulee. You excited? Very. I'm also excited. But can we see him? Setting a timer? No, we can't. We'll be excited. 
No, most of the water goes into hydrating the kidney. So you don't actually get 100 millimeters out of this. Right. It's down there. Right. So this, let's say that if, if you can compare tea to coffee, this is like the espresso of this tea. Okay. Um, I'm going to make you the Americano version as well, so you should try. But I have yeah. instructions for you. And mine, mine is a little bit bigger. I like it. Oh, whatever. <laughs> this is something that should take you a long time to drink. Okay. okay. Um, this has probably more flavor than wine, more flavor than sake, more flavor than almost comparable to whiskey. Okay. So you really just want to wet your tongue with this. Sip. Sip. Please, and um, really enjoy that flavor while it's in your mouth because it's pretty special. And more things to talk about soon. Okay, but I'll get you the Americana version. Awesome. Okay. okay. Holy shit. I've never tasted tea like that. Yeah, that's. It's like. Um, it kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, matcha. It kind of reminds me a little bit of matcha. But not quite. Because matcha is very grassy like this. Yes. Right? Very, very similar, but there's no I don't I don't like that powdery thing that matcha yeah. has. Right? Really nice. Wow. It's not gonna sit long at all like another container. Okay. I want to hear a secret hit with this. It it will be probably amazing with this because because it needs a so little bitter. bit of sweetness sweetness right? Yeah yeah yeah. Really really interesting color. Very much so. Right? Yeah. So, um, this this uh, this tea is not temperature based. I mean, you're already brewing with kind of cooler water. It's really interesting that it steeps with warm water. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I'll explain. There's a very specific reason why. Mm. Allow me to walk around, do a little bit of a tour. And yeah. I think you need to hear this. Okay. Go for it. Go for it. Wow. Mm. That usually is like my next, my favorite thing now. Oh, it does make it different. Uh -huh. Like yeah. having the easy with this. Yeah. Man, it really changed it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it gave it a little bit more sweetness. Like it, c it cut down the bitterness. Holy crap. This was like extra delicious. This is next. Cap what, what do we call this? Cappuccino? No, Americano. Americano version of our little thing. Holy. Wow, it's gonna be crazy. Something else to it, or um, that's all good. It's going to be a lot different, eh? much less intense, and probably more similar to if you've had Japanese tea before, yeah. like that experience, but just a little bit better. Okay, okay, okay cool. Thank and you. and so what what's the difference between how you just brewed it with? Less uh, warm water? The, the thing is, the, the tea leaf is already wet, so it's already willing to just release the flavor immediately. Oh, this is the second brewing. The second brew, yeah. Ah, yeah. got it, if, got if it. If you did the first brew that quick, it wouldn't have anywhere near as much flavor as this. Got it, got it, got and, it. Got and it. if you did this sleeping as long as the first brew, it would be very bitter. Ah, okay, got it, thank you. Thank you. Alright, well let's give this a go, let's see. It is different. Mm -hmm. This one is smoother. Huh. Very green tea like. Yeah. Let's let's try with this. Go. Okay. <laughs> this a go. Do the tea. Do the tea. Oh. 
Is it working? You better eat this quickly because you're not gonna get much of it. Did you run? I was just saying, this place, so for two beer, did it close. We love food. Right now, the restaurants that we went to kind of predict an order. Wednesday was really good. Fine and there is amazing. Four and four is also amazing. But this is the real food. Not like... No posers? No posers. That's nice. <laughs> Not the ones who like no Joey's, like Joey's or Girls Tin Palace, where they think that's a little upscale. Not for those. You're gonna have real, and it really looks for you. It's for the real thing. <laughs> Alex says we should do do a rating, and it's easy. It's five bucks a board. Maybe even a six. And you don't even have a six. That's how good. <laughs> Okay, uh, so yeah, that was very good, very good. I say, if I would complain about anything, what would it be? Yeah, I can do it. So machine, whatever you're ready. All right. Seriously, dude, like you, you like undercharged us. Oh, that's life, huh? <laughs> no, seriously, man, you give us, you give us wow. these pairs. Thank you very much. Oh, that's okay. So continuing our conversation about how great this place was. Now that you can actually hear what's going on, because before I, I don't know how good our microphone setup was. Right. But anyways, yeah. So really good. Re really good balance of everything. Oh, the uh, value. The, the place is on the smaller side, but it's the tables are very well spaced. Pretty much, yeah, we paid like nothing compared to what we got. It was what? How many? We did. We got four four, four courses, courses paired with sake, and and it was like hundred fifty bucks for two people. <laughs> so Wait. booze. Four courses, amazing stories by Josh. Uh, he literally like told us the story of how they make sake and how they uh, process it, and like it's crazy. The guy is like amazingly knowledgeable. Yeah, one of the best waiters. Yeah, we have had. by far, by far, by far. So it wasn't just uh, just regular sake. It was like he went through all different types he explained to us what those different types how they were made uh, where they came from the quality uh, the quality what, what the differences are um, so phenomenal detail in terms of like history and uh, just like really interesting and the last one he did this tea and he, he, according to him, it was like, well, you heard the story, like, he, he, it's his strength is the tea. But it was so interesting the way he paired it because technically the, the tea was really bitter, but we had it with sweet things. So the tea almost kind of like acted like wine where it like enhances your dessert. Or it cleanses your palate. Or too. cleanses your palate probably so that the taste can be enhanced. So, really interesting. I, I've never personally had anything like that because uh, nor normally, like, the tea that you have is just, like, a regular tea, so it doesn't really do anything. But this truly, like, it modified taste. The it taste did. was different, right? So, that's, uh, that's like, the biggest kind of um, thing that... So, from every point of view, our experience was unique. It was unique in, the, in a way that... You know, the guy was telling us these stories. It was uh, unique from flavor point of view because the flavors were very kind of like true fusion, very unique, still retaining the qualities of traditional dish. So, yeah, Calgary is uh, uh, bringing up. We were just talking about it, but Calgary is really bringing the restaurant game up. Uh, it's, it's becoming true like just special right like it's uh calgary didn't used to be like that but in the last five years it's really 
brought up his game. game. Stepped up his game. Yeah, no doubt. So, anyways, this was another adventure of Footy Map. Um, YYC. YYC. See you next time. Hope you enjoyed this review. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye.